well, welcome. This is the big question for today. How do we kickstart a regenerative recovery and village building movement across the UK? So yeah, and I'm Anton, Anton Chernikov, and you can reach me at anton at hotspaces.org. Oh, the arrow keys, should they work? Ah, perfect. So this is where I grew up. This is uh, a place in Southwest London in the suburbs. And um, it's really a classic middle-class family home. You know, it's my parents worked hard so that me and my twin brother could have our own rooms and go to a good school in a good neighborhood. And there's nothing really wrong with this place, but I do think that it's just part of a broken system where we live on a pretty kind of lifeless residential street. Um, we have to drive everywhere and um, our garden isn't connected to other gardens. It's just fenced in, in a kind of narrow strip. And uh, really, I think that this design of suburban housing, this design of family housing is really part of a broken system and is really something that I wanna change. And so I created this, this blueprint and had a friend sketch it out for me. And this is more like how I wanna live with connected gardens, full-size art sculptures, kind of rooftops where you can hang out and this integration between multi-generational co-housing and regenerative farming where you're really connected to the land, where you're able to be creative and everyone can kind of play and roam together and there's not a car in sight. And I guess that today's presentation is how do we get there? How do we move from that old system of these car centered kind of residential deserts and move towards these kind of multi, multi-generational co-housing regenerative models, regenerative villages? And I think it, it all begins with like looking at the bigger picture and the mega trends that are happening around us. So we have COVID that's kind of accelerated remote working. We have the big mental health epidemic that we're all sensing into right now. There's climate change, biodiversity loss, aging populations, and of course the housing crisis that has been created very much because of a extractive property market that has been allowed to kind of run wild across uh, the major cities of the world. And then there's the opportunity of exponential te technologies and um, new ways of doing things. And I think what all of this is converging on is a growing demand for a new model of living and working together with more flexibility, more well-being, more sustainability, access to nature, creativity, and community. And I think that the big opportunity that lies ahead of us is the reconnection, reintegration of urban and rural life. You know, these two worlds have been separated for so long. Uh, and I think this is what, where we're going to get the big reset to bring these two, two worlds, these two ways of life together, to bring back, to bring together tech and nature, fast, slow, masculine, feminine. And so what I've been looking at is new property models, um, both in the city and in the countryside, um, that can then be scaled by bringing together right capital and talent. So in the city, how can we take commercial and retail space and reimagine it as a community hub and as a multi-use space to bring people together and create culture. But then on the rural side, there's been so many rural places and rural villages that have been in decline because of partly monoculture farming, but also because of this rush of young people to the city and the hollowing out of rural communities. And so one of the things I'm spending a lot of time on is going out and meeting estate owners and large farmers that own large land holdings and helping them kind of transition from predominantly food production business model to a regenerative land use model that incorporates ecotourism, co-housing, education and rewilding. And this is kind of my theory of change. If you can bring these urban and rural real estate models together with the right capital and talent, you can really change things. And that will lead to building much better neighborhoods and places in our cities, but also revitalizing rural economies and creating regenerative villages and lots of green jobs in rural areas that have been in decline. And this is really the blueprint for the regenerative ecosystem development that I've been working on over the years. And I think this blueprint is something we're all trying to get to. And it exists in tension between commercial viability and community alignment between this global movement and the local context, the technology integration side, but also the indigenous local village, uh, wisdom and heritage 
and of course the kind of big old battle of physical infrastructure and building with humans and cultural infrastructure and how we govern and make decisions and so really this is what I'm kind of dedicating my life to is developing this blueprint uh, and building it in a beautiful way in this country but then sharing it broadly with the world so others can can learn from what we're doing and vice versa and so who am I well uh, as I was introduced I was born in the Soviet Union but came to the UK when I was three and a half and uh, yeah I think that I struggled in the kind of early years because we didn't have grandparents around we didn't know anyone around we were just our own little nuclear family and we had to learn the language and kind of make our way um, and I really felt that looking back in hindsight it would have been so much better if we didn't live in this old broken system of housing but we lived in truly co-housing uh, regenerative places how much more fun and enjoyable my childhood would have been and so yeah my career has very much started with doing a degree in architecture but I was very frustrated with that degree and so I went on a more entrepreneurial path where I became a web designer and helped a lot of social enterprises and tech startups raise money. Uh, then after a, a trip to Burning Man, I got to stay for 10 days in a beautiful co-living called Open Door in Oakland. And that led me to um, really returning to my architectural roots. And I got an offer to move to Stockholm and open a collective house for 55 other people, which was an amazing experience. And that led me to launching an indoor farming business uh, that's doing well in Stockholm and also working with large scale developers who are building between 500 and 1000 home plus uh, master plan schemes, helping them with their customer development, their community building and their overall business strategy. And uh, kind of two and a half years ago, I then got an invitation to come back to London and be on the developer side. And so my day job is working with very, very senior house builders to um, set up a new firm uh, to buy land and develop large scale mixed use housing in central London. And that's been a wonderful apprenticeship where I really learned the industry, but really my heart lies in village building. And so I've had the, the privilege and the luck of time uh, since lockdown to develop and work on my own UK based blueprint and set up lots of projects and initiatives and companies that begin to map out what I think a regenerative a rural urban model could be like in the UK, uh, the place where I call home. And so I'll talk through all these different projects and these are all logos I've designed over the last year or so. And uh, it all started with renting this beautiful space directly above our apartment in East London. And uh, we agreed the lease last year in September and we designed it in a very collaborative, co-created way. Everything arrived as a thousand or, or more sheets of ply, which we then kind of assembled together to create House of Transformation. And then off the back of create, uh, running a few dinners last year, I was then connected with this beautiful estate in, called Summerleyton in East Suffolk, which is about two and a half hours drive. And I think this neighborhood of Haggerston and House of Transformation combined with Summer Layton and the beautiful projects we can create out there, I think begins to map out what a blueprint in this country could be like. So Summer Layton is about two and a half hours by train out of London. So outside of the commuter belt where everything is so expensive. And it is this, it's been a place that's been in decline, but it's also a place that is so incredibly beautiful and full of nature. Um, the reason it's been in decline is because it's predominantly become a tourist place. So it's packed full on summer holidays and on weekends, but actually it's, it's almost empty during kind of the working hours and the working week. And as a result, it's kind of hollowed out the community because people buy second homes and they come here occasionally, but actually there isn't this strong economic base. And that means that kind of schools struggle and services get lost. And I think there's a real opportunity to reset some of later um, and um, yeah, make it a, a hub for the regenerative economy and a real case study for others to follow. And uh, I when visiting the landowner, so it's 5,000 acre estate, including a lake and a beautiful castle where the, the crown was filmed and loads and loads of other development opportunities. It, what's unique about this place is it's owned by one owner 
Um, and that owner has also founded a charity called Wild East. And Wild East's mission is to help inspire a movement in East Anglia, which is this corner bit of England. And um, yeah, help a mass rewilding uh, movement of agricultural land that hasn't been farmed very well and to restore it to nature and bring back biodiversity and animals and regenerative farming practices. And so have a read of this white paper, hotspaces.org slash white paper. And I just wanted to take through you through the photographs of the place so you can kind of get a sense of the beauty and scale that I'm talking about. And this is exactly where we want to do Rebuild 2022, this beautiful castle and gardens. And uh, there's accommodation for hundreds of people around the eco resort. Um, this was a photo I took on Monday when visiting. You've got this beautiful winter garden and just so much potential and beauty here. I met some wild ponies that just walked up to me, which was magical. And uh, also in the property of the estate is this beautiful Fritton Lake with a clubhouse and eco resort. These amazing rich woodlands, they're building really modern uh, eco builds. And then just 30 minute cycle away is the beautiful Suffolk coastline with this kind of long, long beaches that I absolutely love. And uh, what's unique about Summer Layton is also that everything is walkable and bikeable from the station. So you don't need to rely so much on, on cars and buses and taxis. You can walk five minutes to the marina. You can walk to Summer Layton Hall, you can cycle there. So there's an opportunity to make this a really pedestrianized and non-car centered village, which is quite rare in, in most places in Europe. And so the first step is really to take home farm, which is just here, and use this as a place to create a little co-housing tribe by uh, sharing the six bed house uh, with my wife and dog and uh, a few other couples and friends that share this vision and make it into a regenerative living research center uh, where we can build a food forest, a wild school, um, and then just experiment in a small scale with how we can create a culture. And this is a few photos of the place and the outbuildings. It's really beautiful. And so we plan to rent that in November, if all things go well. And then there's also this uh, local pub by the marina where it's only really open Monday to Fridays, uh, sorry, Friday to um, Sunday and on half terms. But it has six bedrooms on the top floor that are empty. And um, yeah, four days a week when it's also unused. And so can we make this also a co-working space in the guest house um, to make use of those void periods that are so prevalent in these villages? And then, of course, there's the new development opportunities. And so there's been permission for a marina extension, boat village, and tiny house village. And what I also propose to the owner, Hugh, is to also renovate the boat house, uh, which is an old building, and turn it into an innovation center. So here is the, the boat house. And this is a, a kind of outline sketch that I did of what the innovation center could look like. And what I wanted it to be is very much a hybrid between working and living. And almost to kind of, this would be the first step of repositioning, rebranding Simulaton as a kind of Silicon Valley for a generative economy. And rather than us having to go to the city for these kind of high profile meetings and just dialogues, we can bring the city to us and we can bring the world to us by having a really modern facility that showcases this kind of new way of thinking about property and real estate and lifestyle. And so on the ground floor, we have this communal kitchen and prep kitchen with laundry and a, a mail room and a lovely reception, kind of almost like you're going into a London hotel lobby, um, a big boardroom meeting that can also be uh, booked out for beautiful dinners and parties, and then a big uh, multi-use space, a bit like House of Transformation, where you can seat 300 to 500 people for TED talks and presentations, but also it can be used for co-working, um, mark indoor markets, uh, you name it and just to really experiment at a big scale with what, what could be in that central space. And then of course, allow light through at every possible uh, opportunity. And you walk up and you've got these service departments and studios with desks in every room that are kind of allow for longer term stays because hotels aren't really livable. But what we realize is conferences will only happen so many times, but there's so many void periods that could be filled with digital workers or teams deciding, you know what, we don't want to be in the city. Let's just, rent these rooms and work from here for a couple of weeks or a couple of months. And then there's all this land next to the station, next to the marina. Um, and we, I'm good friends with James and we're kind of exploring how 
the marina can be a spearhead for a truly large scale regen village style development of potentially hundreds, if not thousands of homes that are truly self-sufficient, that take away the burden of development from the council because we're not adding to car congestion. We're not having to uh, put a burden on the water supply or energy supply. Actually, it can be relatively self-sufficient. And uh, yeah, so I'm very excited about the potential of that. Um, and so Wild Villages is the name I've given to this model. It's an innovation hub and property development business that works with landowners and farmers in the UK to enable a transition to a more regenerative and resilient land use model. And I think that's the big pitch is you don't necessarily have to buy land and be a multimillionaire. You can find these villages and estates and help them innovate and help them transition and change. And then you can get a small piece for yourself as well. And so what I've been developing is this kind of three-stage model. One that includes a startup phase where you just basically start by adding loads and loads of value, you know, not ask, and asking nothing in return. So I've brokered a natural capital deal where I've helped Hugh and the Summer Layton Estate connect with a fintech company that specializes in carbon credits and raising natural capital finance to help him with the rewilding process and vision for Wild East. Uh, I'm helping him promote his venue, organize events, educational programs, improve their tech systems and their marketing, and effectively just build partnership, create value, build trust. And then that will unlock a pilot phase where we'll actually get to rent some of the buildings and maybe renovate some barns, create some tiny houses, build some glamping infrastructure. And alongside that, create small scale food forests and permaculture farms and mushroom farms as well. And what that does enables to have a footprint in the village so that we can build trust and then unlock that big phase, which is the new build. And most new builds, especially in the country are stored because local people protest. They don't want these blanket residential, very unsustainable, horrible projects that add car congestion they don't want those types of greedy developments to come to their, to their village. And so they resist. And then all these projects get stalled and lots and lots of money is lost and wasted. But because of those first two phases, we can come with a different approach, agree with an option uh, on land agreement with the owner, with Hugh, do a lot of really amazing events, festivals, community consultations, and then fast track the planning. And then ultimately then finance, build and rent these developments. And this partnership led approach is so important because you don't have to be a multimillionaire. You don't have to buy thousands of acres. Actually, in many ways, partnering helps you to de-risk the whole project and make sure that your vision aligns with the, the local people and um, the local context. So what I wanted to share also is I've been researching in Eastern Europe, a lot of companies that specialize in tent structures and geodomes as well. And it's amazing how much you can get away with without needing to get official planning for residential development. You can work with permitted development rights. You can do seasonal co-living, co-working, and that will help you to make the case that this is a way of life. This is a model that people actually want. And it, seeing is believing almost for these kind of more outdated planning, planning departments. Another thing that I wanted to say that's super important with all of this is the work that Joshua does in designing a whole new vision for ag regenerative agriculture that is built around the farmstead, is built around the residential village where you yeah, um, effectively create a mix of food forest and permaculture and mushroom cultivation and then also wild landscape and perennial planting. And we're gonna have a session tomorrow where Joshua is gonna dive deep into this. And it's very exciting. I'm a, a very much a student of his in this. And I'm also looking into not just food forests and electric fences and chickens and kind of natural cycles that just simply bringing the right bits of nature and animals together can create, but also the potential of uh, mushroom cultivation and also uh, indoor farming. And we need to bring in the best of old, old agricultural models, but also new tech and sensors and data systems and platforms like Airtable that will be a game changer for how we learn and gather recipes and data on farming systems. And so the last piece, which I think is really important is we need to not just do things on the ground, but we need to build global databases and networks. And so we hacked together a month ago with Joshua, regenjobs.org, which is a completely free, not-for-profit recruitment platform and talent platform. So you can add your CV, you can add your organization, your job, 
And ultimately we hope it can be a skill sharing platform. And then any revenues that come from the data that we build will be reinvested back into these land projects. And so, yeah, please go there and, and, and add yourselves and your content. And so finally, yes, it, this is ultimately the end game. And the goal for us is how do we make this not just a sketch, but a reality. And, um, you know, personally, I don't want to start a family locked into a horrible res residential suburb. I don't even drive, so it wouldn't work. But I want to live in a place like this. And not just with people my own age, but also with older generations. And uh, try and create this kind of ancient village way where it was on a previous panel where you have elders that hold space and give support to the kids and everyone can kind of play and learn together. And so I take a lot of inspiration from this project in Antwerp because it's great to show that it, we don't have to have terraced houses. We can have shared gardens and it already exists. It's not such a crazy idea. And the idea that we fence off these green spaces and then let everyone you know, mow their own lawns and live very isolated lives when everything could just be opened up seems a bit crazy. So yeah, that's us, me, my wife, Morgan, and our dog, Zuko. And the call to actions are go to Regen Jobs, add your organization job CV, go to hotspaces.org slash rebuild 2022 to pre-register for the Summer Layton Rebuild UK event. If you are interested in living with me and Morgan and doing this co-housing experiment at Summer Layton, go to hotspaces.org slash co-housing tribe. Um, there's the Regen Villages match from before. And yeah, to get in touch, Anton at hotspaces.org. And if you, ever, if you want to do a conference or festival at Summer Layton Hall, please drop me a line because I really want to bring regenerative events and culture to this beautiful place.